Hello everyone, welcome back to the class of macroeconomics. In today's lecture, we will complete the discussion related to the solo model. So the topic that we are going to address is as follows. We want to look at what should be the transition dynamic for an economy facing a different steady state. The second topic that we are going to address today is that we want to look at the steady state again. We want to define it and discuss it. And then we want to see when we allow the economy to have technological growth, then how to set up a simple version of the model that take into account this context. Of course, we want to do that based on the solo model. Then, and then we are going to solve for the model and then see what should be the impact of an increase in growth rate on this new economy. At the end, we will talk about the policy recommendation for growth based on the solo model. So the outline for today is as follows. We want to continue the discussion related to transition path, but we want to focus on the case that when the economy faces population growth rate, depreciation rate, changes in the production efficiency and the saving rate, how does those changes affect the transition dynamic of all the variables for the solo model? And then we will define the steady state again, and then we want to move on to look at the solo model with population growth and technological growth. So this is a more advanced version of the solo model. In here, we want to focus on another concept that is per effective worker, and then we will solve for the system of equations for the solo model under these new assumptions, and then we will also introduce the solo diagram. And then we are going to discuss the role of the growth rate in the solo model. At the end, we will talk about the policy recommendation for growth based on the solo model. So now let's begin with today's lecture. Now let's continue the discussion related to the transition path. Before we begin, we want to review that when we are looking at the transition path, the first question we need to ask is does the steady state change? If the steady state got changed, then the economy will transit from one steady state to another. But if the steady state doesn't change, then the economy will go back to the original state after the shock. And then the second question that we want to ask is what happened to the capital investment consumption and output due to the shock? At the time of the shock occur, after the shock occur, and of course, before the shock occur. But in here for simplification, we assume that the economy always starts from the steady state. And then there is a shock occur, for example, at time t equal 3. So the transition we are talking about is when there is a shock, then how does the capital investment consumption and output evolve over time? Therefore, in here, the horizontal axis is the time, and the vertical axis is the variable we are interested in. If we are interested in the capital stock per capita, then we put the capital stock per capita in there. And then if we are interested in the consumption, investment, and output, and then we will replace vertical axis into, for example, output per capita, if that is what we care about, consumption per capita, and investment per capita. So now we want to continue the discussion related to the transition path. So in the previous discussion, we already talked about the transition path under the case that there is no change in the steady state, but somehow the economy deviates away from the steady state. In today's lecture, we want to talk about a scenario that is there is a steady state change. So following the discussion last time, let's continue the case number. Let's look at the fourth case which is related to higher population growth rate. Or in fact, the outcome is the same as when there is higher depreciation rate. So now let's begin to go through the steps to think about how to plot the transition path for output consumption investment and capital stock under this case. So to begin with, we need to first think about this case that is, when there is higher population growth or higher depreciation rate, then will it affect the steady state? It turned out to be the answer is yes, because the changes in the population growth rate and higher depreciation rate 
somehow affected the slope of the steady state condition. Given that it becomes higher, so we know that under the solo diagram, we are going to have a new steady state condition with a new population growth rate or a new depreciation rate. So then given that the steady state condition becomes deeper, so then we are going to have a new capital stock in the steady state, which is lower. So then we know when we want to plot the transition path for k over time, then we know the economy starts from the steady state and it stays there up to period t equals 3 because we assume that for all the shock it happens at t equals 3. And then we know it will move from one original state to the new steady state. And this new steady state is lower than the old steady state. Again, as we explained in the earlier plot, we said that the transition will always be faster at the beginning and then slower later on. Therefore, the move from the old steady state to the new steady state will have a steeper slope at the beginning and it become have a flatter slope later on. And then the economy then attain the new steady state. So this is how does the capital stock per capita evolve over time for an economy that faces higher population growth rate or higher depreciation rate at time equal 3. And of course, this change is permanent. So then how will that affect the transition path for all the other variables? It turned out that given that the output is the function of the k, so then the output time pass have the same pattern as the time pass for capital stock per capita. Given that consumption is a fixed portion of the output, so again, consumption also follow the same pattern as the output. Finally, for investment, it is a portion of the output as well. So then the investment also have the transition time pass with the same pattern as the output. So that's about how to come up with the transition time path for the case that for an economy that experienced a permanent change in the depreciation rate and population growth rate at time t equal 3. Now let's take a look at another case. The next case that we want to look at is just the opposite of a previous one. That is, now we want to see when the economy experiences a lower population growth rate or lower depreciation rate starting from t equal 3, then what happened to the transition for the variables output consumption, capital stock, and investment. So again, we want to focus on the capital stock again. And as you can see in here, given that it is the opposite of the previous case, so we know that the economy, in this case, turned out to be having a higher steady state. So then what happened is that at time t equal 3, the economy will start to move to a higher steady state. So then what happened is that they will have a transition faster at the beginning, and then the transition will then slow down. And then the economy is moving from one original steady state to a new steady state and the new steady state is higher than the original level of the steady state. So then how does that affect all the other variables? It turned out that again given that output is function of the k and given that the consumption is a fixed portion of the output and the investment is a fixed portion of the output. So for the transition time pass for the consumption, investment, and output, all of them has the same time pass pattern as the time pass pattern for the capital stock per capita. So now let's take a look at another case.